Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Hi, my name is Sister Dora. Um, I, as you know, is with Sisters Who Can, Brothers Can Too. Um, Sister Anna and I uh, started, we started um, with the name. The name came up because Sister Anna didn't really have a name for us. And she looked around the room and she looked at me and she looked at some other sisters and she said, okay, Sisters Who Can. And so, and then I added the Brothers Can Too. So that's how the name came up. Um, so um, today we're going to be canning uh, refrigerated pickles. So this is just a introduction to the actual pressure canning. Um, refrigerated pickle, the difference between the refrigerated pickles and the actual pressure canning is the sterilization process. You don't have to sterilize the jars when you're doing refrigerated pickles. Or, or any kind of refrigerator canning because you're only keeping it for like a couple of weeks, maybe four weeks, three weeks, maybe a little less than that. Um, some of us eat it right away. <laughs> However, when you're doing pressure canning, you can store it for up to a year. So right now, today, we're just going to do an introduction to the actual refrigerated pickle. This is for beginners. You know, most times um, people get nervous thinking about water, hot water and and um, steam. And, and Sister Anna has a beautiful technique where she calls it the, um, uh, what do you call it, Sister Anna, when you hold up the- oh, the Captain the, uh, America so you don't Captain get- Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> when you lift up the, the lid so the steam won't go in your face. So Sister Anna calls it the Captain America. So the lid is not- it's like blocking the, the, the steam. Um, so what refrigerator pickles um, relates to um, gardening because it extends to harvest. It, it'll extends the harvest easier and it's an easier method in canning. So um, if you're new to canning, like I said, you know, um, this way is a way to introduce you to the process. Um, now we have two different types of canning. We have, well, three actually. We have refrigerator canning. We have um, the, the water bath canning, and then we have the pressure canning. Now the water bath canning, um, which is probably gonna be next week, we're gonna be doing jellies and, and jams. These are low, these are high acid, high acid foods. The pressure canning is more of a low pressure, I mean, low acid food, like your soups and your and your um, stews and meat right. and stuff like that. So, um, and we do have the simple tools that we use. Um, we do use a simple tools where you can purchase on Amazon. And I'm just going to show you a few. Um, Sister Anna may or may not be using these tools. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a, a lid lifter. Then we have the, the spacer or the debubbler. We have the funnel. We have the jar lifter. And it lifts the jars out of the hot water. And we have other tools that Sister Anna may or may not show you. Um, I'll probably show it to you, you guys next week if you're on. Um, that's basically it for now. Um, and Sister Anna will probably explain more to you as she go along. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Sister Anna. Sister Anna. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sister Dora. She's been on this journey with me for a while, um, working with community members like yourselves and preserving food. Um, as she mentioned, this is one way to extend the harvest. And this is just part of the things that we do as Sisters Who Can, Brothers Who Can, too. Um, we actually include with that different organic garden techniques, soil health, 
and other food preservation um, methods, such as preservation, uh, such as dehydration and um, fermenting. She mentioned the other forms of canning. So this is a, the doorway to canning. Um, I, I remember the first time I learned how to can, I was quite nervous because um, you're worried about, Lord, this food is going to sit on my shelf and not being refrigerated. So this is really an easy, quick method to ease you into canning. After this, there is the, the hot water bath, as Sister Dora mentioned. And these are things that can stay in your pantry for those who may garden. And I'm going to ask a question before I go any further, because it would be great to know um, who's out in the audience, where you all from. If you can use the chat feature, if you can, to let us know where you're viewing this from, if you are a gardener, and if you've ever canned before, just kind of gives us a nice way of getting to know the audience and who is uh, visiting and, and working with us tonight. I'm broadcasting live from Springfield, Massachusetts, and Sister Dora, I think you're in Newton tonight. Is that right, Sister Dora? Yes, ma'am. All right, so as you can see, uh, you can do this anywhere. Um, so if you can let us know, it'd be great to know where you're seeing this from. And if, if everyone is from Wakefield or you might be viewing this from somewhere else, it's just great to know. Um, so tonight we're doing the very introductory level of canning of pickling, which is making refrigerator pickles. Now, when you think of pickles, most people think of uh, cucumbers. Right away, they think of cucumbers. And of course, that makes sense because pickles generally are cucumbers. But this recipe can be used really with any vegetable. So if you are someone that maybe has a container garden or maybe you get a CSA or a farm share or something like that, and you have all these beautiful vegetables and you're trying to figure out how do I hold on to it? Um, what else can I do with it? Um, this is a great way of actually extending the harvest as my dear sister mentioned, and then making some new recipes. So we sent out the recipe. It sounds like some folks have got, have received it. And that's what we're going to play with tonight. Uh, you can even make refrigerator jams, refrigerator jellies, and they'll stay in your refrigerator up to about three, four weeks at the most. It depends. Like in my house, it only lasts for a couple of days. So the, the hardest part about this recipe, if there is a hard part, is making the brine, which is the liquid. As our youth um, say, uh, whenever we work with them, they call it the pickle juice. So that's what we're going to start with first. So with our recipe, we want to take a cup and three quarters of apple cider vinegar. And you can use organic apple cider vinegar, um, whatever is available to you. We always like to make things accessible to folks. So I'm gonna put in one cup and three quarters of apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna stand up and you have two views of what I'm doing. I'm gonna pour this into my pot. Okay, so I've got the apple cider vinegar in. I'm now gonna add two cups of cold water. And the water doesn't necessarily have to be cold. This happened to be sitting in my cold pantry area, so it's naturally kind of cold. Okay, there's our two cups of water. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. Now I'm using what they call raw sugar or demerara sugar. And I'll show it here. I think you can see this. So it has um, larger granules. Cane sugar is good as well. You just want to make sure that you heat it up really good so it dissolves. So we're going to use two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, that's in. And now we're going to use three tablespoons of our salt. You can use kosher salt, Himalayan salt, pink Himalayan salt, which is what I'm using tonight. If I was doing this for the hot water bath, I would actually want to use pickling salt uh, because that salt actually will not change color. So whatever you pickle, it won't change color. It doesn't have a caking agent. 
So when you're doing the hot water bath, uh, the preferred salt to use is either kosher salt or the Himalayan uh, or, or the uh, pickling salt. And that's the difference. When you're doing refrigerator canning, you can use really kosher salt, sea salt, doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna put this on the stove and let it heat up and simmer for 10 minutes. So that is heat up. Sister Dora, can you do me a big favor and time me for 10 minutes on that? All right. Okay. So now we're going to pack our jars. And I'm using the typical canning jars, the, the mason jars that you see with the three pieces. Here's the jar, the lid, and the ring. Because we're not worrying about sterilization, and having to sterilize this, you could use the you can use an old mayonnaise jar or something like that that's clean and that you've cleaned out. Um, if I was doing the hot water bath, I would definitely need to use this type of jar because of the sealant on this side. And when we do that class for you, we'll show you why. As I mentioned, you can use any vegetable you like. Uh, we did a class where in the Berkshires where we did beets and radishes and daikon radish. It really made for a beautiful, a beautiful display. But I'm going to use a traditional pickle. And you want to cut it up in spears just like this. I have two types of jars. The wide mouth, which is this one, actually is, is really good for pickling because it gives space to very thick items like this. But if you only had this type of jar, which is, they call this the regular mouth, it would still work. But this one is easier to pack. So we're gonna start with our cucumber. We're gonna add some garlic, fresh garlic and fresh dill. So you take a sprig of dill like this and another sprig. If you could not get a hold of fresh dill, then you could use the dry dill. It'll still work. I put two sprigs in there. You would just use a quarter of a teaspoon of dried dill. Now this is optional. Some people like a little spice in their pickles, others don't. I'm just gonna put a little dash of the red pepper flakes. I know it says a quarter of a teaspoon, but that might be too much for some people. So with the red pepper flakes, just do it to taste. With the mustard seed, I'm gonna add one teaspoon. And this is what the mustard seed is going to look like. Hopefully you can see this. Um, and your, you know, organic is good if you can get it. If not, your most of your supermarkets has that brand. Okay. Now, some other things you can add. You can add a pickling spice if you want it. You could add turmeric. So this recipe is kind of a basic recipe, but there are other things you can add to it along the way. Now that I've gotten my other seasonings in the jar, I'll add my garlic and I'll start to pack my cucumbers. Now, I know this is not the, the summertime when cucumbers would be in season, when you would get those shorter um, pickling cucumbers that are just made for pickling. Um, but if you just wanted to do this, say you got some beautiful cucumbers from a Whole Foods, you could just cut them in these spears, use the jar to measure them. Again, because we're not worrying about storage on the pantry, in the pantry, we don't have to be concerned so much with head space and making sure that the bubbles are out. I'm gonna get in as many as I can in this jar. Okay, that's jar number one. And then we're gonna use jar number two. Same thing, put in a piece of garlic. And I just put in a piece, but if you are a garlic lover, 
like we are in my household, you can put more pieces of garlic in. This is a very, very easy recipe to work with. Now I'm going to make this one a tad bit spicier. I'll put in a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper. We did this class in person at the Nightingale Community Garden and everyone had a different variety of vegetable that they went and um, they harvested direct from their garden. And it was really fun to watch that. Okay, so I put in more mustard seed. And if you're not a fan of mustard seed, you don't have to use it. Or if you couldn't find the mustard seed, you can use the ground mustard. You would just use a little bit less because it'll be stronger. So I'm gonna pack this jar. And I'm gonna add all the garlic here. So now our two jars are ready for us to add the brine. So let's check on that. Sister Dora, how am I doing on time? Am I, uh, is my 10 minutes up? You have five more minutes for 10, five more five. minutes. Okay. So we give that a little stir. It should be ready in five minutes. Any questions so far? If you have a question, you can use the chat feature or um, you can take yourself off quickly off of mute. Just make sure you, an you ask your question and go back on mute so we can maintain the sound quality. No questions? And I think someone put in the chat that they had tried to do um, canning before, I believe. Oh, yes, yeah, someone had success with jalapenos. Um, someone pickled jalapenos. I like pickled jalapenos. They are absolutely delicious. I chop them up and put them on my own nachos. So that that's a fun one to do. Okay, then we'll give it a little stir. How many cucumbers did you use? Um, with this one, they were the long ones, so I cut up two. Okay. If I was using the short ones, I would probably have six. Okay. In the recipe you gave them is good for how many jars? Oh goodness, if they did six, they could get like three, depending on how thin. They may, if you make the spears very thin, you could probably get maybe three, three or four. Mm -hmm. Now, when I do, mm -hmm, go ahead. They have smaller jars, like the smaller jars. They can cut the uh, the spears in a smaller size and make a small jar of um of uh. Um, yeah. Yes, they could. They you may could. not have enough brine, but it'll fit into a smaller jar. It will. Enough. It will. And I'm using a food funnel. This is just to make sure I don't have a disaster and a mess all over the place when I pour in the brine. But you don't necessarily have to use it. It's just to keep things a little tidy. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my brine so we can fill these two. Right. So everything dissolved pretty quickly, which is good. All the salt, the sugar, everything broke down. And now we can go ahead and fill our jars. Ms. Diana, is there any way you could tilt the camera um the camera where you're at? If if you can tilt it down just a little so we can see the whole jar. Not yet. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. All right. 
I'm just going to move this closer to me here. All right. And we have again, two questions in the chat. Okay, go right ahead. Does it matter how firm or soft or the age of the veggies that you want to use? You know, because this is more refrigerator, the um the brine itself will help make it a little crisper, but you know, the firmer the better. But I will tell you, I have used veggies that were a little soft and pickled them and they came out very nicely. Okay. That's a good question. Yes, it was. For Thank the pickled you. beets, um, this is the second question. For the pickled beets, do the beets need to be cooked first? Not necessarily, no. No. The um with because the if you're doing if the brine is hot, like this is hot right now, it'll help to soften those beets a little bit. And once it sits in that mixture over time, it it'll actually absorb it and it will soften over time. It'll make it a little softer. You know, we actually did um, pickled Brussels sprouts. And I did yes. boil the Brussels sprouts first. Because they're so hard, you know? You boiled them? Yeah, I boiled them first. I boiled them and then, you know, this is refrigerated, of course. Refrigerated um, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. Pickled, pickled I've, done those, I've done those without having to boil. Now, this is the first jar. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. We have another question. Um, I don't know why that's not okay. Here it is. How long does the veggies have to sit in a in brine before you use them? I would let it sit overnight at least, and by the next day you you're ready to start um actually eating them. So let's set overnight in your refrigerator, and then you can go for it after that. And one thing I'm doing too, I still make sure they're covered because um, that way the whole cucumber gets all of the brine and it'll start to seep into the flavoring will start, the cucumber will start to take on the flavoring of the brine. So I do try to fill it up as much as I can. Now that these two are full, we'll just put our tops on. Again, we're not so concerned about cleaning off the top or making sure that it's making contact. We know after tomorrow, in my household in particular, after tomorrow, we're gonna crack these open and start eating these. <laughs> there you go. That is your refrigerator pickles. If you're using beets, if you wanna boil them, you can, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, same thing with turnips. You don't necessarily have to boil them. You can go ahead and use them as is. If you want to peel them a little bit, that's up to you. Uh, but most of your veggies that you're getting, you can do it just like this, and it'll be ready for you to eat um, the next day. A couple of variations to the recipe. You can add uh, ginger and turmeric. You can do this with carrots. There's a great uh, carrot recipe that incorporates ginger, turmeric, and curry. It's quite delicious. Um, you can do jalapenos, of course. You can do habaneros. So most of your peppers you could do. You could do the small cherry tomatoes. So most of your vegetables you can do like this in this method, as well as the hot water bath method. Now, those of you who would try this at home, is there a favorite recipe that you'd like to try this with? I'm curious. As far as the vegetables go? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I did, um, Mm, at the at the library, um, I, we did we did a whole we had a whole bunch of vegetables spread out on the table from the farm, and we put everything in there. We just picked <laughs> everything. We had we had cilantro, 
Russell Sprouls, um, um, I think I think it was celery. I think mm -hmm. some celery and pickles. I mean, you know, cucumbers and mm -hmm. throw everything and just start pickling everything with the same brine. Yes, because you can brine. use the same brine. You definitely can use the same brine. Um, the question about how would you cut the beets? You can cube them. I find when I pickle beets in any method, if I brine it, I mean, if I um cube it, it actually is easier to work with. So I would cut them in cubes. This is a good combination, carrots and cauliflower. I would definitely do this one. And I have done cauliflower. Um, are there any good combinations? Well, really it's to, to your taste, but the ones that I would suggest, radishes and, radishes and carrots are good. Radishes and pickles. Um, you could do red onions and radish. That's actually very good to put on salads. Uh, let's beets see. Onions, beets with onions. Beets with onions is good. Yes. Mm -hmm. You could do cherry tomatoes with onions. That's another good one. Um, I'm glad someone asked this question. How long would they last in the fridge? With this method, it will last in your refrigerator three to four weeks. Now, if we were doing the water bath method, I have things, I pulled something off of my pantry that I had in there for five years. Um, so it depends on the method. Of course, the more of the sterilization, more of the processing time, the longer it's gonna stay on your shelf. But these can last in your refrigerator three to four weeks. Like I said, depending on your household, it may go faster. <laughs> and sometimes we have uh, vegetables that's wiltered in our refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, before they don't throw them out, <laughs> can them. <laughs> right. 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 You can make something very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, this question, could I add green beans? Of course, that would make a wonderful. And I do green beans anyway. I pickle them. Um, I do a dilly green bean. I do a um, uh, spicy uh, pickled green bean. So. Is it obvious when the refrigerator pickles have gone bad, it's gonna give you a very rancid smell. You can tell when it's, and it might have a color. If it looks like this in the refrigerator, um, you're good. Or if it's a little clearer, that's fine because stuff is starting, you know, all the, um, the salts and the sugars are starting to settle and mix with the other, um, the, the other seasonings that you've added. But if you see, like, say, the garlic is turning a strange color, then you know you may not want to use that. I would say, honestly, don't go beyond four weeks. If you get into that third, that, that three, four-week mark, eat them. Put them on salad, you know, put them on a sandwich. But it will it, it will last you up until up until that time. So that is a good question. You could do zucchini with this, too. And zucchini, I, I've done both ways. I've done with the water bath and as a refrigerator pickle because zucchini has a lot of water. It's hard to preserve that any other way. So both methods work very well with zucchini. I meant to mention that uh, zucchini and yellow squash, both of those are very, very good for pickling. Um, butternut squash, that's better for the pressure cannon. Are there any vegetables that we would recommend not to be pickled? Um, Sister Dora, I'll start and you can add on some of the sweeter ones like parsnips. Um, I have not tried it with parsnips and they have kind of a sweet flavor. So I don't know how it would mix with the brine. Um, can you think of any offhand, Sister Dora, that wouldn't work well with this method or pickling in general? I was gonna say radish, but we use radishes to, at the library. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't right now. Um, of course, spaghetti squash. <laughs> yeah, that some of the winter squashes. You're right. That's a good one, sis. That's a good one. Some of the winter squashes are difficult. Mm -hmm. I know in the ball book they have a pickled butternut squash. I tried it. It didn't taste so good to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of the winter squashes might be a little difficult to pickle. 
There is such a thing as pickled watermelon rind. If there's anyone that's had family in the South, that's a big deal. It is a thing. It is a thing and it does taste pretty good. Um, lettuce, no. Lettuce might wilt, um, but the cabbage itself you could do. And of course you can ferment cabbage to make sauerkraut. And, and that's another good way of preserving quickly is fermentation. Um, how do you cut the radishes or are they whole? You could do both. You can slice them like, if you like, or you could do them whole. Either way is fine. I think when you slice it, it gives it a very nice appearance. That's a good question. Thank you for that. Just a quick check. Um, is this something folks would want to try at home and think they could do at home? Good. Okay. Okay. So we're going to give you all um, a little homework. <laughs> <laughs> we do this at, at all of our sessions. We ask everyone to give it a try. Let Katie know or send her a picture of what you've come up with, because this is something you can do right now. Again, if there's a Whole Foods or a farmer's market um, and they have winter produce that you're trying to figure out what to do with this, try this method and you, you might find some very, very nice recipes. In terms of onions, um, I've used red onions. I've used white, Vidalia. Um, I've used a little small um, onions. Um, I've used scallions. So I've done different types of onions. And pickled red onion is actually quite good. It makes for a delicious garnish. It's great for sandwiches. It's great in salads. So if you end up with a lot of red onions, you can definitely do a pickled red onion. Any more questions or anything else we can answer in terms of pickling? So next week we are gonna have, now Sister Dora has a nickname. Um, <laughs> you know what, Rita, that's a great question. Um, it depends on the recipe. This particular recipe called for the apple cider vinegar. Um, there are some that will call for the white vinegar. A lot of times when you are doing the hot water bath, it will ask you to use the white vinegar, particularly if you are uh, making salsas or chutneys or things like that, because um, the, the apple cider vinegar has a slight sweetness, right? So it really does depend on the recipe. You could do this recipe with the white vinegar. That's not a problem. You could do that. It's just going to change the look slightly, but it'll still come out pretty good. That's a great question. Thank you for that. Very good question. Now, next week, um, we were we have a nickname. I was starting to say this. We have a nickname for Sister Dora. Uh, we like to call her Jam Master Dora <laughs> because she is the master, the mistress of everything jams, jellies, uh, preserves. Uh, and so that's why we call her jam master. So she's going to take us through how to do blueberry jam. I think you are going to do the full hot water, hot water bath method, right? Or are you doing the refrigerator method for blueberry jam next week? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We can do whichever, whatever, uh, <laughs> Carrie wants. <laughs> um, so if we can you do, all do refrigerator or we can pro we can do the uh water bath. So um if you all want to see the hot water bath method, we can do that. If you want to see the refrigerator method for making jams and jellies, we can definitely do that. That is equally as easy as doing what we just did tonight. But that's what we have in store for you next week, next Tuesday at this time, is how to make blueberry jam. And uh, that has turned into an absolute favorite in our house, even more so than strawberry jam, which used to be a thing I would do all the time. So if you all want to learn how to make jam, uh, again, it will either be with the hot water bath or the refrigerator method. I think we're leaning to the refrigerator method to keep the trend up. And if you have other additional questions that we didn't get to tonight, 
feel free to reach out to Katie. She can get you our contact information or we'll put it in the chat. You can reach out to us directly. Uh, one thing um, in another life, Sister Dora and I both work with the Northeast Organic Farming Association, the Massachusetts chapter. This is a part of our food access work. Uh, food access really is not just giving food away, but also showing folks how to have control over their self-determination of what they eat. So this is a part of what we do. Oh, what do you eat pickled veggies with? Ah, that is such a great question because I eat it with just about everything. <laughs> I put it in rice. I will um, put it on sandwiches. I definitely put it in salads. My husband sometimes will eat it out of the jar. <laughs> um, so it, it can be used in a wide variety of things. It is a great condiment. If you want to put it in a wrap, maybe you have a um, a wrap with turkey or chicken or something like this, something like that. You can use it in place of lettuce um, on a burger, a veggie burger or beef burger. So it's an excellent condiment and you can use it for many, many things. And you definitely can eat it by itself. All right, if so, yeah, there aren't question. any more questions and you can always send them to both of the sisters or you could also send them to me and I can pass them on to the two sisters who did a wonderful job. So thank you guys for coming and thank everyone at home for coming as well. Um, I just want to mention that if you guys are going to come to the um, next um, canning event, which is next Tuesday, you do have to register it online or you could register with the reference desk upstairs. Just make sure you do that because we want to make sure that you guys get your plots in now. Um, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Sister Anna just put her email in the chat if anybody wants to grab it. Let me just get that. I think everyone is on the ramp. Other than I think okay. Beth is also a member. She's she's upstairs. She's one of our okay. Members. So she's okay. absolutely fine. Thank you guys. You guys did a wonderful job. I'm sorry okay. that everyone was so quiet. <laughs> I think you're, it's a very tiring night, apparently, too. Okay, I mean, everybody's coming, you know, after work. Yeah, after work <laughs> yeah. or probably after dinner. Um, yeah. But they use the chat, so that's good. That is really good. Yeah, I tried to sneak a couple of good questions in there so that we <laughs> had some more conversation. I, I had, yeah. I'm i sorry I had to leave because um, our desk was empty for a while and someone needed Oh, to yeah, speak. no. What time do you all close? Um, Nine. I close at oh. nine. Yeah, okay. so I get to go home at night. I got a couple more hours left. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We close, we close early. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. We close yeah. every day at nine yeah. except for Friday. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We're big on the accessibility. Everyone gets to come in whenever they need to, really. Um, I like that's, that. good. Yeah. that's good. That's really good. That's it's, good. Yeah. And especially for people who have to work nine to fives, they should also be able to use the resources. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to ask if it would be okay if we could try to do the hot water baths next week because I did put it in the advertisement to some people who are um, already signed up, if that okay. would be possible. Um, I understand if it's not, I'll just send make sure to send that information out um, because I don't know if people have already been preparing for that. Uh, either way, okay. it's up to you. Okay. So we yeah. can, so we can do, um, Okay, so we can do blueberries, but um, I'm thinking I'm thinking this the blueberries. Sometimes the blueberries in the store are out, since they're out of season. Yes, mm -hmm. you know they may not. I don't know. We'll see. Because I know I, I already I have some in the refrigerator, frozen already, ready oh. to go. You know. <laughs> yes. However, yes. however, I can probably use those. You know. Mm -hmm. Um and and if I can't find and if I can't find any then i'll probably do did you already say blueberries did you didn't say blueberries or strawberries i didn't say any type of i just said I, hot water canning. I just want to make sure okay okay yeah okay. Even so if you guys, didn't yeah. The fruit. no i didn't mention the fruit at all it, you guys can do whatever you want even if you guys can't do the hot water canning i just would want to let people know if they were um coming to see something new that i would let them know that it, it would okay. be the um the same method different um 
I don't want to share any misinformation. That's not the. No, no, <laughs> no. no, no. I, <laughs> but, you're good to do the the jam, right, Sister Dora? Yeah, the, I have some. Um, I actually have some some blueberries that I froze from um the last um canning class. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And what we'll do now, they'll see the full method. So they'll see from the sterilization oh, and then how to prep it and the processing, the processing time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. All and right. I think in the, the tools and, and, and just the uh -huh. and how to wash the jaws. Well, but well, they're already right. doing it. Right. <laughs> All I right. Know, I I'm interested. I can't wait. Yeah, we'll do some things ahead of time, like wash and We'll go over how to how to examine the jars and make sure that they're in good condition. Oh, perfect! Thank you. That's okay. There's so many steps. I this is the one I'm very much excited for because I've always wanted to learn how to make jam. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. You okay. too. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.